when the Prime Minister spoke from the dais yes. at the Ram Janmabhoomi Temple at Ram Lala's Pran Pratishta, he spoke as the Prime Minister yes. of India. So, and his speech was very well received indeed. People uh, found a lot of meaning and connection mm -hmm. yes. to what he said about India as a rising civilization mm -hmm. or as a rejuvenating civilization. What are your thoughts on it? Well, first of all, that uh, Narendra Modi is a very lucky man. He himself didn't make the difference in getting the temple in place. I mean, some devotees of the BJP say it's only thanks to the BJP that it got there. But I think that's incorrect. The decisive judicial verdict was the one by the Uttar Pradesh High Court in 2010, because that recognized the evidence, recognized that the site had a Hindu history, and therefore awarded the site to the Hindus, albeit practically in a rather compromised way, in the sense that they also allowed a Muslim site to come up just next to it, which was, you know, which has in the past already often proved to be a formula for riots. Yeah. So in that sense, the Supreme Court improved a bit on it, but essentially the Supreme Court only confirmed the uh, verdict of the lower court. So the verdict of the Supreme Court came under BJP rule, both in UP and in the center. But the earlier verdict, which I think is the far more important one, came when the BJP was in power neither in UP nor at the center. To quite an extent, the judiciary in India is really important. I mean, is, is really independent. And um, so those people who say, yeah, but you know, it never would have given that verdict had not the BJP been in power. Mm -hmm. They, first of all, are demonstrably wrong. And secondly, and, and for nationalists, perhaps uh, more damningly, they are saying that India is a banana republic where it is the government that prescribes to the courts what verdict they should give. So that's, uh, that's not a true story. But at any rate, uh, you know, Adwani, he had some merits, but he was not even there. He was subtly disinvited. Uh, whereas Modi was there, you know, I mean, he had good karma, I suppose. You know, somewhere in the past he must have done something good. <laughs> so he was there to preside over it. And in this case, his, uh, his speech was quite good. And I mean, as a long-standing critic of Modi's government, I think I have to emphasize that his speech was really impressive. First of all, of course, his rhetoric, his diction and so on was electrifying. Uh, but then contents-wise also. Now, there is, a, there is a point where I have, I still have criticism, namely uh, the confusion within the RSS, which is being more and more and more promoted between Hindu and Indian. Those concepts are different. And Long ago, you see Guru Golwalkar and so on, Savarkar and other, you know, leaders in the Hindu movement made that distinction. Okay. I mean, even, even when it's not nice, you know, nevertheless, it's based on that distinction. Like Golwalkar said, you know, the non-Hindus, you know, should be treated well and everything, but they should not have voting rights. They should be treated like as if they're foreigners. Now, I strongly disagree with that. But at least, you see, I have to cite it here because it proves that he makes a distinction between Indian and Hindu. Mm. 